Hey folks, back with you for yet another quarantine video. And this video was the result of some work I did based on a comment. And the user's ID, the YouTuber's ID, escapes me right now. And I went and tried to do a search for which video they commented on. And I couldn't find it, so uh, maybe I'll edit the text with their name. But um, it was a good comment. And it had to do... Uh, around the fact of what I used to do with my bullet tubes that I no longer use, the Hornady bullet tubes, uh, in favor of the so-called SoCal S&W um, version of their bullet feeder. And what I used to do was I had this 2x4, and it's this length for a specific reason, because when I had it on the ground uh, on my garage floor, the... Uh, the top would sit under one of the would sit under the press as the press was mounted in an inline fabrication storage dock, so it would put less pressure on the uh, on the storage dock. So this was uh, was it 32 inches, maybe 34 and a quarter inches. So I repurposed this and uh, cut this, routed this seam, this whatever you want to call it, holish, this path. And one end has uh, another cutout for the bullet tube, which, again, it's a little small on the uh, bench. So the idea was to load this up with bullets and then slide them into the uh, bullet tube. And that worked for years, and I was reasonably happy with that. My, my complaints were that it was so big, it took up so much space on the, on the bench, and it's bulky. But again, it served two purposes. So um, I've since created a better mount for under the storage dock. So the comment that came in on YouTube was to cut a groove in here because when doing 45... They work great. They fit perfect. They slide perfect. Doing 9mm, in fact, I'll throw one the other way. A little harder to get in there because your fingers aren't, my fingers, aren't, uh, aren't skinny enough to get up in there. So if I was to, and what I normally do is lay out a bunch of bullets and then I just start flipping them. And very easy to do with the 45 to slide. A little bit harder to do with the 9mm because of the size of the groove and how much they move around. So um, the comment that came back on the YouTube video was to cut a deeper groove in here so that the nine millimeters would fall a little deeper and have uh, less movement. And I got to thinking like, okay, I wonder if there was a way to do that and come up with something smaller, more efficient uh, because I did make a different floor mount to hold the uh, storage dock and press and I had a piece of leftover oak that uh, I had uh, used for I want to say maybe some of the safe uh, the supports inside the safe a few months back but I like to keep my scrap oak especially oak uh, and I am an oak fan so um, I thought all right this is like hmm, what do we got here 20 inches maybe 21 and a quarter. So about two thirds of uh, the big black stand, but you know, it's big enough that one, uh, one tube is about um, uh, one and a half, uh, or rather uh, a little more than half of this for one tube. And I was still having to fill the, uh, the black version of this up with multiple runs in order to fill the 45 uh, or the nine millimeter. So uh, what I did was I took the idea of a deeper groove and I used, hopefully this will be visible, I used my table saw to create a uh, 20 degree cut on each side with a little, uh, little bit of a center. And then uh, I countersunk some magnets so that uh, now it's out of the way because it can just attach to my bench on one of the legs one of the steel legs 
So um, with this for 45, the only downside is I don't have as much working surface as I did with the previous. So what I used to do is lay a bunch of bullets out and then rotate them. So you're still handling bullets, but I would rather do this than uh, feed this one bullet at a time. Uh, I don't know if that's psychological or what. I also like the fact that this doesn't take up as much space on the bench. Um, I usually don't have this rubber pad here, and I don't know if you're going to be able to see that. Uh, yeah, you will. Um, so when I go to load, and watching the camera and doing this at the same time is challenging. Um, and I have not created any type of jig to hold this yet. Maybe that's uh, the next step is to uh, maybe fashion something out of wood that, uh, that I can set this on so it's the right height. And then every time I slide this, this in, I'm not having to do any ma manual adjusting. It will be at the right height, so it's just a quick slide. So that's worked pretty well. Um, I like how that came out. And then for 9mm, same thing. Um, what I like about this is it's easy to turn them upside down, whereas on the other one, um, I couldn't do that. And because the other one had such a deep cut, my fingers wouldn't go in there. But now I'm able to get, uh, because these sit up high enough, I can get the uh, fingertips or get my fingertips in there enough and then just do uh, a bullet flip where necessary. And then when I go to push, whoop, we're still going to run into resistance. This is still drying. So when pushing, and I'm not going to bust out the 40 or the nine millimeter because that's on a different press. So I will just toss these in here for now. And naturally you don't want to play nice because you're on video. And then the last few. Sorry about that, I had Honey Bunch come in. So to pick up where I left off, uh, again, I think the idea of building some type of jig so that I can set this in and I don't have uh, hands trying to support because this is a much lighter and maybe it would make more sense to put the nine millimeter in because this is a big giant hole for 45. So maybe I will do that. Let me go grab the 9mm. Alright, take two. This is the 9mm version. Nothing like doing things live. When I was younger and used to watch Microsoft, especially Bill Gates, do uh, Windows 3.x demos. Everything would always go wrong and it was just hilarious. So uh, anytime there's a demo, it will go wrong. All right, so now we've got nine millimeter and we've got a smaller hole and I think it will make sense to put a jig together just because the weight of the bullet and me holding this up. So I think that is the next project, a little jig, yeah. So it's workable. It doesn't work as easy as uh, the 45, but still speeds things up in uh, in loading. Oh, they don't even fall out as fast as the 45s either. Uh, it does speed things up, uh, maybe mentally, as far as I'm concerned. But I like the way uh, it gives me the flexibility, and I think uh, it is time for a jig, which gives me reason to make yet another video. So more to come all right so that was bugging the hippie jibbies out of me and when i thought about a jig i grabbed another piece of spare oak and i started to trace the uh the outline of the nine millimeter the nine millimeter feed tubes and 
then I was thinking, well, if I have a block, maybe on one side of the block, I'll do nine and the other side of 45. And then I thought, well, why don't I do what I did with the other uh, load jig? And that was just carve something into one of the ends. So I busted out my Dremel and got creative. And I thought, all right, on one end I'll do 45, and on the other end I'll do 9. So I started with 9, and I'll show you. So obviously I'm not good at this yet, because I just made it, and it will take some time to get used to. But uh, here's the general idea. Now that I've loaded this up, it'll probably fail spectacularly, but it was working earlier. So let's say I have a bunch, you know, a handful of bullets. Let me make sure this is the 9. I'll take the nine. I will. Let me see if uh, you're in. You're in focus. Yes, you can see that. I'll take that up there and hopefully, and as I thought, let gravity do its work some of the time. And believe me, it worked a lot better. <laughs> Not on film. <clears throat> so let's try that again. Let me pick some of these up. Like I said, I haven't figured out the best way to. Uh, to deal with gravity yet I was doing it a couple different ways and uh, I got it to go pretty decently uh, naturally I've got these on two different planes now so it was it was feeding reasonably well for again uh, a homemade jig of gravity and all it takes is one bullet to F everything up but uh, that was true with the other jig as well. So again, haven't figured out how I'm best going to approach this so that it's fucking miserable. Ah. All right, you guys get the idea. Um, I will still play with it because I think it is worthwhile and uh, I will get it to work. The 45 actually works pretty decently, uh, but the 9mm, a little, little crankier. I don't know if that's just a bullet weight thing but I will over time maybe maybe as the wood gets worn uh, it'll get coated because the 45s have a molly coating and uh, things will be a little bit better but uh, better than than hand feeding so all right so there you got the idea all right so for 45 it was working better now that I've said that it won't so let me Toss a couple on here so you get the idea of what I think should happen. <clears throat> and there was one guy, assuming guy, who commented on one of my videos like, you like to make shit harder than it needs to be. I'm like, yeah, it's in my nature. So those feed reasonably well. Let me try a little bigger run. But uh, so I will say uh, solution better, not solved, because uh, this was better than what I was doing in the video you saw earlier, which was for me much, much earlier as I started hacking around with uh, my wood tools to try and solve my humongous problem at hand, oh, naturally. All right, so now I just have to get used to how I'm gonna deal with gravity and how it's gonna feed. But I think uh, I think you get the the idea of what I was trying to accomplish here. There's that one errant bullet that has to play play not nice. And I think two more actually fill the two. So I will figure out. What uh, what angle I need to be at? Oh, that was a nice one. What angle I need to be at? What uh, what everything? But that will come with practice, just as I've found with everything else. Reloading, reloaded, reloading, reloaded, reloading, related. But uh, the 45s uh, go in a little smoother than the nines, and obviously that's due to the weight. And I run a light nine with uh, 115 grains. So. I should have quit while I was ahead. Yes, I should have quit while I was ahead. All right, I got to get a clean run before I stop this video because that would be bad karma. All right, give it to me. Give it to me. Oh, yeah. All right, 
that's it it uh it's better uh i wouldn't say solved but it's definitely better so um i will put a little lacquer coat on that and then uh, it goes on the bench so next video